Hi, I'm your friend Art, and I'm back with another calibration video. So I've shown you so many different ways to calibrate your display already, but what I have for me here is the BenQ PV line display, and the PV line display uses Palette Master as the calibration software, not Palette Master Element like in the SW line, but Palette Master. And I haven't really done a calibration video on Palette Master yet, so this is a great opportunity to do that. So for those of you that own the PV line displays, you can follow through on this one. I'm Art and Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Palette Master technically existed before Palette Master Element. Some of you may wonder how is that possible because the SW2700PT was released in 2015 and that is the one that uses Palette Master Element software. This model, the PV line, and this PV270 was released in 2016, and this used the Palette Master software. What many of you may not know is that BenQ, before they have released the SWU and PV line, they also have a PG line display, which is a pro hardware calibrated pre press display. So that display uses Palette Master software, and they also have decided to use Palette Master software on the PV display line, unlike the SW. So now that we have that history out of the way and a little bit of information about BenQ, let's run the calibration on this PV270. First thing I'm going to do is launch Palette Master, not Palette Master Element, but Palette Master on the system. The device I'll be using to calibrate this display is the i1 Display Pro. So now that Palette Master launched, the first thing we'll notice right away is that it looks very similar to XBrite i1 Profiler. And this makes sense because this is a co-developed software between BenQ and XWrite. Many of the settings that I've gone over in the i1 Profiler calibration video are going to be very similar to this one. However, this specific software, Palette Master, will have some settings that are particularly fine-tuned to calibrate BenQ, PV, and PG hardware calibrated display line. So, like with all i1 profiler software, I will choose advanced and it's the same thing with this palette matcher, I will also choose advanced as well. Workflow selector in the top left, choose profiling. And because the interface is already on the PV270, I will leave that there. This is where we would come in under RGB primary and change the color gamut that we want to calibrate our display to. And this is one of the big advantages of having a hardware calibrated display is that you have a ship on there, a 3D lookup table that can change the color gamut output of the display based on the color that you choose during the calibration. And that's something really amazing and different about a hardware versus a software calibrated display. So you can choose Adobe RGB, sRGB, you can do Rec 601, Rec 709. What I'm going to choose is native. Essentially, this is running a calibration based on what the panel can produce and is equivalent to panel native in Palette Master Element software for the SW display. White point, I will choose D65 or leave it at D65. Luminance, I'm choosing 80 here. However, any range between 80 to 120 will work really great for any type of creative workflow, whether you're a photographer, printing or not. Pro video workflow, any type of design workflow, this is a great luminance range to set your display standard to. Tonal response curve, I will leave it as standard, which is a gamma of 2.2. And for contrast ratio, I will leave that at native. In a workflow selection on the bottom, you can come and select on those workflows or simply click on next. For here, I am going to use the default value because I'm running on a Macintosh system. If you are running this on a Windows system, what you want to do is come in and change the ICC profile version to 2. But if you're on a Mac, you can leave that at the default 4. Click next, and this is where we would choose the amount of patch size we want to measure. 143 for small, medium is 236, and for large, we're looking at 486 patches. The other thing too, what you can do with this software, Palette Master, is that you can go in, and if you want to drag a picture in there, it will also generate extra patches based on the pictures that you throw in. So if you do a lot more landscape photo, you can throw in the landscape photo in there and it will generate a number of patches that you can use to calibrate your display or to calibrate this display to. I am going to skip that and use a standard 486 patches that I have the option to select here. Next up is this, under the measurement screen. So under measurement, 
there's no display hardware setup. And primarily, this is where the calibration setup, this is where you would choose the calibration slot that you want to use. Most of these display would come with two calibration slots, either calibration one or calibration two. This way, for instance, you can use calibration one at native, calibration two at sRGB, or whatever you may want to use that at. But it gives you the flexibility of having two separate hardware calibration on a singular display. I will also check uniformity and from there, click on start measurement. So like any i1 profiler software is going to tell me to rotate the device, hang it from the screen, and I am going to angle the display up so that the device lay flat on the screen. And again, you can calibrate in a fairly bright environment like this because on the device itself, there is a felt lining around the aperture opening so that stray light doesn't come in. But the only thing you need to do is make sure that your screen is tilted back. This way it lays flat on the display. Press OK. Click on next and it's going to start to do its automatic calibration. This will take some time using Palette Master software. It takes much longer than Palette Master Elements. So we're going to have this run and then we'll come back and talk about this when it finished. The other thing to remember too is that with the PG and PV line using Palette Master software, the only devices that you can use to calibrate your display are devices from X-Ray. You cannot use the Spider software. And that's also one of the big advantages of Palette Master Element is that it opens up the calibration devices to both x right and Data Color Spider devices. So now that the calibration is done, we'll take the device down and then we'll do a profile validation. Something to remember though that I find interesting is that this is using a colorimeter to run a calibration, which is a lot faster than a color spectral photometer. With the speed that this is going, I'm not even sure if I want to use a color spectral photometer to run the calibration on here or not. Otherwise, you probably have to leave it on there for quite some time. Once you're done with the calibration, it will tell you that the measurement is finished. From here, what we'll do is click on next and save our profile. You can give this profile a custom name if you like. I will give mine a custom name with a year, year, month, month, day, day. And also I'll put in the RGB primary native and the luminance value of 80. The other thing too that I might put in is S1 for plot one or C1 for calibrations one. Let's put down C1 instead. This way, when I switch between calibration one, calibration two, I know which profile to choose from my system. You can check user level and from there, click on save profile. It's going to tell you the profile saved successfully and it will give you some readout data. So for instance, here, it will tell you that luminance target was 80. We were able to reach 79, which is good. Contrast ratio is native. It doesn't give me the contrast ratio. And it gives me the RGB primary and all those different colors. And then from here, what we're going to do is right at the bottom there, display QA, we're going to click on that. And this is going to do a profile validation. Again, very similar to the way how I1 Profiler is doing the profile validation. Choose the standard. I will choose the x right Color Checker Classic, which is a 24 patch. Another thing that you can do too in here is you can change them to the different color patches that you want to use. In fact, what you can also do is load in an image and have it run a validation based on the image that you want to double check and see how the Delta E is. But I'm going to just stick with the Color Checker Classic because that will give me a 24 color range that is representative of the real world. Click on the measurement and then start measurement. We'll rotate this again. Hang it from our display and calibrate or validate rather. So this is going to go through and measure 24 patches. This should be a lot quicker than the process of the calibration itself because it doesn't have to do any hardware LUT writing. It doesn't have to do any of those type of adjustment anymore. It just does the validation directly. Perfect. Now that our validation is done, I'm going to take the device down and let's have a look at our results. 
From here, I'll click on next, and this is giving me the result. I am going to use the Delta E2000 as a reference, and I will change my average Delta E and maximum Delta, Delta E a little bit. I'll set my average Delta E of two and a maximum Delta E of five, and let's see if this passes, and it still does. So on all the patches, it was able to achieve 0.52, which is really awesome. And the highest Delta E out of all the patches is 1.05. I mean, this calibration in Pano Native is just extremely awesome. What I can do here is then, again, very similar to i1 Profiler, save this report. I'll save this as PV270. And then I can always come back and double check these data afterwards and see which color has the highest Delta E, but it's really highlighted in the program for you. For instance, the yellow one right there is the second highest, and this is reading at 0 0.965, and the red one is reading at 1.445. So the 1.445 or 1.44 is the highest, but again, at the Delta E value of anything below two, you're really not going to see a difference, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. And you can always add this to trending like any x right i1 profiler software will allow you to do. You can click on trending and see how your profile and how the delta E is going. If it's in a straight line, dipping down a little bit, that's great. If it's going up just slightly, that's perfectly fine. But if it starts to go up sharply and start to go up over time, well, it may indicate that there is a problem with the display. So there are a few more things with Palette Master that you can do that you can't do in the Palette Master Element software. For example, it can do Advanced Calibration Editor, and that means you can load the calibration in and edit the calibration on top of it that will allow you to do that. You can do a quality check, which is like a profile validation. You can do a uniformity check on the display, and you can set that between 3x3 three three grid or a 5x5 five five grid, so it'll just divide the display up a little differently. So there are some advantages of Palette Master over, I would say, Palette Master Element. However, for example, Uniformity, it's not built into Palette Master Element, but it's not really a big deal because you can really just launch i1 Profiler and then run the Uniformity there too. So again, there are certain features and certain settings, I would say, like in the calibration process and the profiling process that are somewhat more helpful in Palette Master Element because this is a full-fledged calibration software that is co-developed by BenQ and XWrite. So that's how you go in and calibrate BenQ, PG, and PV display using Palette Master Element software. If you have any questions or any comments, leave them in the section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool, great contents like this. And until next time, art's right.